Today I'm installing the roof on my lean-to shed and I'm going to be using some techniques that I've not seen used a lot as well as some materials that I think are going to save some time and money. Today's video is sponsored by Pfeiffer. I'm going to be using it two by sixes for the roof. So I've got them all here. And instead of going up there and actually measuring where they're going to be laid out on the front wall and the back wall, I'm going to do that right here and use this two by four as a story stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark 24 inches all the way down. So I've got my story stick and I did mark the front side just so we don't get confused as we put it up there. Now let's go transfer the marks. All right. I am gonna start this 16 inches from the edge. So let me go ahead and measure that out. And that's where I'm gonna start this beam. And it is gonna be 24 inches on center. So actually we're gonna have a piece that's gonna overhang here on the side. And so it's all gonna connect in. You'll see that a little bit later. All right, so now I could just move this to my line and I'm gonna flip it up on its edge so I can see the marks. Now I'll just transfer these over and then we can mark them. This last one's just gonna be right at the end of the board since it's a 10 foot board. Now I know exactly where my rafters will go. Now we'll just go to the back wall and do the same thing. All right, so before I throw the rafters up there, I need to make a few cuts. And the first one I'm gonna make is actually to mirror the slope of the rafter as it is up on the roof. If we just left it cut at the 90 degrees that it's at, then the front of the trim would tilt back at around nine degrees. And I'm not an absolute savage. So we're gonna make this cut <laughs> so that it sits flush and so that my perfectionist tendencies will be satisfied. The way I designed the roof is a 212 pitch. So for every 12 inches, it's gonna raise two inches up. Now I marked this on the front and I did that by putting a rafter square against that front header and then just drew a vertical line up against the rafter as it was sitting up there. So that's an easy way to do it, but you can also figure that out by using these numbers right here on your carpenter square. And I have this nice little fancy one that I've been using, but they're on just the normal ones as well. And it says, common and this is your angle so basically you pivot right on the pivot point and as you go up when you get to two that is a 212 so that's a cool way to lay out the pitch on a roof when you're using the 212 312 412 method and of course when we're using power tools there's no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses I've got all the cuts on one end, now I'm gonna cut it to size. And I'm going to take the top angle that I already cut, and I know the length that I need the whole thing to be to get the size roof that I want. So I can just measure all the way down here. That can make the mark, do the same 212 pitch layout, and then cut all those on the miter saw. And you might notice that some of these boards have been really long, and those are because those are the ones I salvaged from the teardown of the old shop inside. So I got some of those rafters from the butchering room, and. Uh, they're just a little bit long, so we're gonna cut them down and we'll use some of those pieces for the blocking later. Now I can use this board that I just cut to line it up and measure out the rest of them so that they all should be the same length. It'd be a little bit easier than measuring them and trying to get that rafter angle on each one. All right, that'll do. Let's pick this up tomorrow. All right, it's a beautiful day today, and I'm gonna start by doing the bird's mouths on the rafters so that we can set them up there and have nice support. And yes, yesterday was a short day, but I've been having challenges with this entire build. It's been a process. So we've been getting all the comments about where are the shed videos, where are the shed videos, because the last one was December 3rd. And basically what I figured out is winter is a horrible time to start a shed video. And so we had ice, then it turned into snow, which actually was pretty amazing because we got to go sledding on the hill. It was fantastic. But then that snow turned into water as it melted. So I had put this huge tarp over everything to try to keep the wood protected. And then it ended up leaking and it was just a huge nightmare. The wood on the floor is actually very weathered now. So it's a rustic shed, but we're back now and we're gonna be finishing it. So let's get this done. All right, so on this back rafter, I want a six inch overhang on the back and we're gonna have a couple pieces back here. So I want this to be four and a half inches 
So I'm gonna move it in. Right about there should give us that six inch overhang. All right, so what the bird's mouth is gonna do is we're gonna cut out a little notch so that we will have full support on top of this top plate. Because right now we are just resting on a singular point and that's not gonna really do a great job of carrying the load. All right, so I'm just gonna line this up with the back of the top plate and make my mark for my heel cut. And without moving the rafter, I'm gonna do the same thing on the front side. So that line that we drew is the heel cut, and that should be at the same angle as what we cut on our front and the back of our rafters. And so basically what we do is we want the seat, which is the next cut, to be the same size as whatever our top plates are, which are gonna be three and a half inches. So I'm gonna take my carpenter square, I'm gonna line it up with the heel cut, the back side, and then right here, I'm gonna get it to three and a half inches to the edge, and then that's gonna be my mark. Now we could cut these a few different ways. I think I'm gonna use a jigsaw because with a circular saw, a 212 pitch is a really harsh angle, and I don't think I could do that very well. So we're just gonna go with the jigsaw. All right, so here we go. It's a pretty good looking one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. All right, now we can do a test fit, and this was my first time cutting these, so I'm not gonna be surprised if they're not exactly right. All right, put it on here. Oh! All right, so this one, there's a little gap on here, but what I just realized is the cut's actually good. It's that the front two by six is higher than the back two by six. And I should have a top plate on top of this, which I talked about in the last video and I don't, but whatever, this should work. Let's check the back. All right, this back cut, it actually looks pretty good, uh, but I've got some space here in between the heel, which basically means that I cut the front heel a little bit too far down. But this is all gonna be covered up at the end, so the main thing is that we just have a good amount of the wood hitting on this top plate. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the marks to everything else. We've got the rafters up, but we wanna make sure they have a solid connection to the rest of the shed. So I've got these little rafter ties right here, and I'm gonna be putting these on the front and the back of every rafter. Right, I've got my rafter lined up on the mark, and I'm gonna pull it all the way forward, and then these just slide right under here. I'm gonna put all the screws in here, and then we'll do the same thing on the back side. All right, now I'm coming all the way over to the other side and I'm gonna put in the last rafter. And the reason I'm doing that is so then I can run a string line across the front and make sure that they're all aligned because all these cuts, you know, I made them, so they might be off. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, now I can just position each rafter on my marks and then come up and make sure it's at least getting close to that line. And I'll just continue that through the rest of them. With the rafters up, now we need our front and back uh, ridge board, something like that. I don't know what it's called exactly. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what it's called, because I don't know. But I'm gonna measure these and make these the same length that the entire roof is gonna be wide. And then I'll put in those other rafters that I had talked about earlier. I cut the front and the back to size, but now I'm gonna mark where all the stud locations are so I know where to put it on the front because it's not gonna be flush with both of the ends. I've lost my camera lady and my helper, so I'm gonna be using these clamps as kind of a second hand here. So, and I'm hoping that this will help support it. And I've got another one at the end there. All right, so let me see if this thing is gonna hold down there. This will be very hard to do if it doesn't. Still not the best option because I've got to look on the back side of this. I need to be over quite a bit. So as I'm up here, I'm just thinking it probably would have been better to screw a block to the underside of this and then have it rest on that. All right, actually that's exactly what I'm gonna do. This is the real life behind doing it yourself. It's not as easy as everybody makes it look. All right, that was the hard part. Now I can just fire in screws across the rest of the face. Wait a minute. 
when you look at this from head on, this is way further over than it's supposed to be. And the other side is almost flush. So I put this on upside down. <laughs> Mistakes were made. What can we do? Oh, okay. All right, so the way that I assembled this, you'll notice I don't have rafters on the outside of the building. And I did that so that I can save material. Doing it this way will save you either one or two two by sixes and it will save money. But since we don't have support here, what I'm gonna do is put in some blocking. So I'm gonna do blocking in between the supported rafter and this outside board here. And then after I do that all the way through, I'll build in another piece of support underneath and then I'll put some little crippler studs underneath here and that will transfer the load. So everything will be nice and supported. I'm just not using that extra two by six on each end. We'll see how it works. All right, to close off this end wall, I'm gonna be putting the two by four up against these so I can kind of build my structure. And I made an angled cut already on the end, but I don't know where it needs to cut off just yet. So these are gonna be screwed up to this to form that support. And then I'll do the studs in between, but I need to figure out where to make the cut down there. So I'm just gonna temporarily screw these in so that I can make my mark. All right, I got a little cripple stud cut for each one of these other studs, all the way down to this cute little guy right here. And I'm running out of screws, so I'm actually just gonna nail these in. That does nothing. <laughs> All right, the last thing to do for the roof before we start sheathing is putting in some blocking and this is going to be for the soffits. So basically there's going to be some open areas here where we wouldn't be able to nail off the soffits when we're done. So we'll put this in there and it'll give us a good place to attach it when we go to do those. I'm going to go ahead and sheathe the sides of the shed first and that's going to really make everything a lot more rigid. When I was up there, it was really kind of moving around. So before I get on there and start putting on roofing, Let's get this firmed up. So I'm gonna start on the back and the way I designed this whole thing is that I can have the two by six here flush at the bottom and then a full sheet will be able to go up. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure this in and this will help me put up the OSB so it doesn't fall down and then get it up there and start tacking in place and just rinse and repeat all the way around. Now I'm just gonna be shooting the nails down the edge and I did go ahead and chalk marked where my studs are because now I can know where to nail just looking at the chalk lines. I'm going with OSB here because I'm gonna be installing lap siding over the top of it. Now, another popular way to do that is just to do straight T111 or smart siding full four by eight sheet panels. And then you could basically be putting on your exterior right now. And I almost went with the paneled exterior until I got some 3D renders from a freelancer on Fiverr, who's the sponsor of today's video. So Fiverr is a marketplace that helps you connect with freelancers that can help you do things that either you don't want to do or just don't have the skills to do. So you can continue to do the things that you're good at while freelancers help fill in the rest of the gaps for your business. So they can help you out with things like a custom logo, building a new website, video editing, or or even doing 3D rendering like I did, and tons of other things. I did have a CAD model of the shed already, but I wanted some realistic 3D renderings so I could really see what it would look like in place and compare the lap siding versus the paneled siding. So I jumped on Fiverr and I found Christian W. He's a pro level freelancer and he's got a great portfolio. I looked through it, it looked awesome, and I went ahead and placed an order with him. And within just a few days, Christian delivered some awesome renders. He even did a couple revisions and that was really easy to request through the chat and the order page. After seeing the renders, I knew I wanted to do the lap siding and I'm so glad that Christian was able to help me because I couldn't do it on my own. So if you need some extra help, you can hit the link down below in the description and you can see what services they have available to you. And if you use code FTBT, you can get 10% off your order. And a big thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. All 
All right, a storm is coming in. I'm gonna see if I can get this last wall sheathed before it gets here. Not now, Susan, we're on a timeline. Time crunch, time something. That'll do. We don't have the top part, but this is good. Whew. All right, I got the sheathing up and I'm gonna go ahead and apply some house wrap on this. Now I've got the little three foot rolls instead of the huge nine foot rolls, just cause it's gonna be easier to work with. And I'm just gonna slap them up there with this uh, little whack a slapper thing. It's a technical term, but you do not have to put house wrap on your shed, obviously. I just want that extra layer of protection in case any water does get behind there. Cause I might be storing some things that I really don't wanna get wet inside there. All right, I'm gonna have to figure out how to manage this thing here as I go, but I'm just gonna get it started. Whoa, do not try to knock in a staple with the back of your staple gun. Could do some chalk lines or something. How fun will that be? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is take the clamp, let the pole fall through. And for this next layer, you want about six inches of overlap. All right, for the top windows, I'm just gonna run a piece right over the front of them. And I'll leave it that way until I go to install the windows. That way it'll just give me a little bit of protection from that wind blowing in because it's probably gonna be a little bit before I get those windows in. Now I'm gonna move on to the sheathing of the roof. And this is one of the new materials that I was talking about. So this is not sponsored or anything. I just saw this in Home Depot and I was looking and I think it was like only a couple bucks more than the regular OSB. But uh, it's from Georgia Pacific and they call it force field, which, it's just cool. It's like a Star Wars, you know, ship or something. So what they've done here is this is just regular 7 16 OSB, but on the top they have this gray weather barrier system. And basically what it is, is it's like having a, uh, like a, like a zip sheathing over the top of it, like a tape, because you can kind of see here on the sides where they just apply it. So they're applying it and they're basically waterproofing. So you do not need felt if you use this. All right, so we're starting on the back and I'm gonna use a couple blocks to put up here. So that way that the board will not try to slide off as I start getting the OSB sheets on. I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but I'm gonna just kind of try to take this up the ladder and, you know, shimmy it up there as I go. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't bad at all. All right, we're gonna start in this back corner and if everything is laid out properly, then I should be able just to align this. And the nice thing about having these little blocks right here is I can just butt it up against it and I know it's flush with this edge. Start nailing it down. All right, so now I can take my first measurement for my other piece and I'll basically be staggering these. So I'm gonna cut a small piece. We'll just start cutting and placing these things down. And we should be good. I didn't get H clips, so I'm just gonna be using some little uh, framing nails for my eighth inch spacing in between the panels. All right guys, a little word of warning and I lost my camera lady again, but as I was pushing the, the new OSB sheet up and getting it over the top of the ladder, it scraped on the edge and it just tore that little uh, covering off the force field 
really badly. Now I think that's close enough to the edge where I can cover that with the seam tape, but yeah, you definitely gotta be careful with this. I don't know how great this stuff is. I'm definitely not a believer just yet, but uh, we'll see how it keeps going. Right, yesterday I put up the sheathing and I noticed on the front edge that uh, it was overlapping by I don't know, about a quarter of an inch and that's because I didn't account for the eighth of an inch expansion joints when I designed that. I am going to take care of that in the plans though when we have those available and they will be available at the end of the build. So this morning I went ahead and trimmed everything up with a router. It was dusty as all get out uh, but now it's nice and smooth and we can start to put on the fascia. Now for the fascia, I'm going to be using these 16 foot LP Smart Siding 1x8s and these are great because I'm not going to have to do any kind of joints. I was looking at PVC, but the most I could find that in was a 12 footer and that stuff is super expensive. These are about 40 bucks for a 16 footer where the other ones were 70 bucks for a 12 footer for the PVC. So I'm going to go with this and I already pre-painted these. I'll be cutting down that big 16 footer to around 14 feet and putting it up there is going to be a little bit of a challenge because it's a one by eight and that front ledger is a two by six. I can't really screw something to the bottom of that. I need a spacer. So I made this little jig, which I think is actually pretty cool. <laughs> I just have a little piece of two by four, which is going to go on the underside of that front fascia two by six. And then that'll give me the inch and a half that I need. So there'll be a little bit of wiggle room and I got a little piece of OSB and then just another scrap on the front so things won't fall off. And Hopefully this will work really well. We'll see. Got the fascia board cut to size and I got that measurement by putting a couple pieces of scrap of this board on the right side and left side because this board will have the whole front covered and then we'll tie into it on the side ones after we get this one up. Oh, do not fall. Oh my gosh, do not fall. Ah! Oh, good gracious. Ah! It is finally time to start installing the roof. I am super excited. And this is my first time doing it. So I want to make sure I do it the right way. And for what it looks like, the whole idea is that it's all about how you install things. And there's a very specific sequence that you want to follow. And basically you want to follow the way that the water goes but in reverse. So whatever the water is going to hit right before it falls off the roof, you start there and work your way up until you get where the water is going to initially fall. And the reason behind that is if you start with where the water starts and then you end up where the water ends, then it gives a little spot here of penetration where the water can go. And that will get down in behind there and cause you problems. On the other hand, if you start in the back where the water is going to end and then work your way up, now when that water comes off the top, it's going to shed down. So I'm going to start up there on the back installing the drip edge. And then I can start doing that taping process and working my way up the roof. Now here's the drip edge that I'm going to be using. And you can see it's got the little angle drip that will come away from the fascia here, and then this is the side that will get nailed in. And I'm just gonna nail this in with some roofing nails. You can do that by hand, but I bought a roofing nailer because it's a great excuse to buy a new tool. I'm also gonna use some roof flashing sealant here, and I'll put that on the fascia side of the drip edge. That way, if there's any driven rain that comes up, it won't go up underneath it. So I'm gonna secure this with some nails and then come back and trim out that corner. And ear protection, isotunes, link in description. And for this corner here, I'm going to use these little shears and I'm going to cut right along that edge on the top and then fold it in. This doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered up by the side trim. All right, we've got the low afternoon sun here, so I know we're casting a lot of shadows. But down here, uh, I'm going to overlap this by at least six inches. And then I'm going to cut it again with an inch and a half overhang for this far side and then bend it around just like I did on the other corner. And we'll put some right on top of here to help this stick down. If I can get those as close as possible to each other, then we should be good. All right, now let me trim this corner. And if you have fast forward to get here, yes, I did not put felt down because I am using this uh, Georgia Pacific force field. So to protect the edges, I'm going to use some tape. Now they did have some Georgia Pacific tape, but I looked at the reviews and they were horrible. It said like the backing was coming off. Like, so I did not get that tape. And I do know that the zip system is a great tape. So I'll tape that and then I'll tape the rest of my seams. And then I can start on the side trip. And I'm going to overlap it so that the tape is on top of the nails. And that way I don't need to seal up the nails with any of the flashing sealant because 
the tape will get in. Now I'm just gonna work all the way up the roof taping. I'll tape my short seams, then the long ones, short, long, all the way until I get to the top. All right, I just finished up and the sun is setting, so we're gonna have to do the shingles tomorrow. But honestly, I don't think this saved much, if any time. Between the rolling and everything, I feel like doing felt would be just as fast. All right, it's time to put down some shingles and I'm gonna be using these architectural shingles. So I like these because they have better wind resistance. They look better, although you're never gonna see the backside of my roof. <laughs> now, traditionally, you would start with a starter strip for your shingles, but because my roof is only 15 feet wide, it didn't make sense to spend the extra money on those. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my own starter shingles. And basically, I'm just gonna cut off the bottom piece here and use this top piece for the starter strip. I'm also gonna cut six and a half inches off the end to give it a staggered start for my first shingle. It's definitely better to cut the other side of these. I'm gonna take the first starter strip here that I have. I'm gonna do a three quarter inch overhang on each side. Then we'll just fasten this with some roofing nails about three inches up. Now just work my way down, finish that starter strip, and we can get to the full shingles. Now I can start laying the shingles, but we need to make sure that everything is staggered. You don't want any seams right over another seam, or obviously the water could get in. So you wanna do what they call making a book, and that is basically making a series of different cuts so that you'll have a staggered start. And I saw a way to do it from Mr. Legit Roofing Expert. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. And basically, I'm gonna cut these so that they're all staggered. This is my full one. And you can see we're gonna land past where we cut off the starter shingle here. Now I'm gonna line the rest of my books and stair step up so that I can then just go all the way down with the full shingle. It's a little bit breezy up here, which is nice because it is hot on the roof. <laughs> all right, as I'm getting down to the end, uh, I'm gonna have little pieces that are not gonna be obviously a full shingle. So what I'm gonna use is the off cuts from the books I cut earlier. Then I'll cut them off with a three quarter inch reveal over the side, just like the other one. I got a little wise and I got some knee pads. <laughs> and now I could just start back on this next row. And I'm just gonna keep lining up to the reveal and then same thing over the edge. As I get here down to the edge, I was before cutting it off on the side after I laid them down. That was a huge pain because cutting from the top versus cutting from the nice soft back is just way harder. So what I'm doing now, I'm gonna take my piece and then mark a little line where the overhang is, then flip it over. Then I can cut it to size and nail it down. It is way easier than trying to cut it after they're already installed. Before I get to the final rows, I went ahead and applied more of the zip sheathing tape and just rolled it over that front edge just a bit. And that way it's gonna make sure that that gap in between the sheathing and that front fascia board is sealed up. So my second to last row actually turned out perfect that it's right up here along the front edge. And so for the last row, I am going to put these on and then cut them down. And actually I'm gonna cut them down first just like I've been doing on the side because I just really don't like cutting it down once it's already installed. So I'm gonna cut it down so that it'll be flush here, nail them down, and then go ahead and put on that front uh, drip edge. All right, the last piece to go on is another piece of this drip edge, and I pre-bent the edge here. And uh, there's a little gap there, but I'm gonna fill that in with some sealant. When I'm done, I fold it over this tab underneath so as the water runs off, everything should go downhill. I'll do sealant on there, nail it down, we'll be good to go.